Wait, 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 wait. Should you guys buy the M1 Mac Mini now or should you guys go ahead and wait for the upcoming M2 Mac Mini? Great question. Let's talk about that. What I would personally do at this point, having using the M1 Mac Mini for about four months now. Let's talk about it. <laughs> So it's been about two months now since I copped the M1 Mac Mini. Wow, low pro fresh in the house, 16 to 8 gigabytes. Tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good, if it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see, hold up, performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go, let's go. No overheating, got grace the jigs up. Best desktop, I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through these shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar lots of stereo. Swap. <laughs> All right, so first thing before we get into all the nitty gritty, I want you guys right now, comment down below how many likes are on this video at the time that you guys are watching it right now. And I have a surprise for you guys at the end of this video for doing so. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this rumored M2 Mac Mini that is looking to possibly be announced later this year being announced alongside the iPhone 13. This M2 chip is said to already have gone into production, guys, and will be first given to us on the 16-inch MacBook Pro. But let me tell you guys why this is a good thing and why I see this as a way for performing needing users like myself getting the power without spending that bag bag. So this M2 chip is rumored to have 12 CPU cores and 16, 16 GPU cores, whereas the current M1 gives us only 8 CPU and 8 GPU cores. So as you guys can see, getting a huge jump in CPU and especially that GPU bump. So why is this a big deal? Because now we can expect on the M2 Mac Mini 4 to perform like an absolute beast. Being able to output more displays because of that increase on the GPU side of things, which I'm all here for. So we're basically getting a MacBook Pro in a compact Mac mini body. Now, I also would expect for us to no longer see an eight gigabyte RAM option this time around. I believe that Apple will understand that 16 gigabyte RAM option will be the new baseline going forward. As for my testing and current usage on the eight gigabyte Mac mini that I have right here, it's just not worth it for anybody to go out there and buy because it's honestly just not enough RAM to fully see the benefit and power on an M2 chip. It's like buying a Lamborghini, right? For high performance and then you got this high performance engine in it, right? But you're riding around with donuts as your tires. Yeah, your car can actually go fast. It can go fast and it's powerful, but you can't even push it past 50 miles an hour before them tires give out. <laughs> you get where I'm going. When it comes to storage, I imagine that the 512 gigabyte SSD option will be the new baseline. I don't think that we're personally gonna see 256 gigabyte storage option again with this M2 chip, but y'all know I always tell you guys buy the lowest SSD storage option and buy an external drive to save all your video files, school papers, music, photos, anything else that you guys wanna work on on this drive. Only use your internal drive for download loading and storing Mac applications on it and that's it. This in the long run guys will lengthen the life of your machine because you won't be bottling down your internal storage with just a bunch of junk files and unknown things that possibly is going to get downloaded that you didn't even know was there. So it's best to go ahead and keep that separate and also the number one reason the number one reason, because hell, it's just plain James cheaper. I recommend you guys buy a USB-C hub with the external slot for a two terabyte SSD, saving yourself over $400 to $500 versus spending $800 with Apple for two terabytes. We just don't do that over here. The next thing that I wanna talk about with the M2 Mac Mini that I'm hearing is something that we probably can expect, and that is new color options. So as you guys are seeing, Apple is getting back to its grass roots and giving us more color as consumers like they used to back in the days. So I personally expect us to see the same color options that we're seeing now with the new M1 IMAX, which I did a video here talking about those. So if you wanna check that out, link for it down in the description section below. But I'm hyped for these because as much as I love the typical standard gray color, it just doesn't add any personality or character to my space. And with Apple offering more color options, we'll also make these even more attractive to new as well as curious users looking to switch over from PC to to Apple because it's nothing like being able to swag out your whole space and have some tech products match your style. And speaking of switching over, right, one of the major reasons for most people being hesitant on making 
making that switch from PC to Mac is because of that price. Let's keep it a buck, guys. I know for a fact before I personally made the switch, that was one of my biggest reasons, right? So let's go ahead and talk about what I expect this price to actually be. Honestly, guys, this is where I think we will all be shocked because even with this much power, I'm not expecting Apple to even increase the price by that much. Here's the price start breakdown I'm thinking we will see with the M2 Mac Mini. For the base, 512 gigabyte storage option, I'm thinking we will start right at $1,000, only being $100 more than the current M1 512 gigabyte option. So think about this, y'all. You will basically be getting a beast of a machine, a standalone M2 MacBook Pro in a Mac mini body for the same price as an iPhone. Crazy. Trust me when I say this, y'all. I'm picking this bad boy up day one and will 100% be my computer that I know is gonna last me five plus years easily. Because to be honest with y'all, as impressive as the M1 eight gigabyte RAM option is, it's only able to hold up for probably about two to three years before I'm really gonna start seeing some bottlenecks and different things like that because of the updates and more power hungry future applications will become over time. Now, three years is not bad, but I'll personally like to buy something that will guarantee to last me about five to eight years if possible. And I think the M2 Mac mini will definitely do that with the power that it's gonna house. Now, what does this mean for the M1 Mac mini? Is it all of a sudden just a bad machine to buy? No, not at all. I think this just means that Apple has redefined what the term baseline means. When the M2 Mac Mini guys is released, this will be the baseline for people like me who require heavy, extensive computing power for video editing, uh, photo editing, music production, all of that type of stuff like that. And the M1 Mac Mini will be the baseline for your everyday casual user who just want to be able to browse the internet, answer emails, uh, watch YouTube videos, watch Netflix, light video as well as some photo editing, but nothing like too, too crazy. Although it can handle it and get you through, long term note, the M2 is gonna be the new baseline for something like that. So to answer the question, if I didn't already own an M1 Mac Mini and you're looking to buy right now, should you guys or should you guys wait for the M2 to drop later this year or early next year? I would say this right i would honestly wait if you guys are still able to get by with what you currently are using and you're not really in a dire need to go ahead and upgrade I say only upgrade if it is necessary. If what you are using gets you by, then go ahead just to continue to use that and don't get caught up in all of the hype. Even if you notice that I'm genuinely excited about it. I always want you guys to only spend when you guys need to. Now, let me speak to those people that need something literally right now because what you guys have is just not cutting it anymore, right? Then I would say the M1 Mac Mini guys is still a good buy, but only if you guys get the 16 gigabyte RAM option. Like, as much as I like my M1 Mac Mini, I laugh every day to hide the pain and hide the fact that I should have bought the 16 gigabyte RAM option instead. But I bought it guys just to test it out to see if the eight gigabyte RAM option is enough but it ain't it, Chief, so, you know, I took the L for y'all. <laughs> but anyway, y'all, that's my spill on the M2 Mac Mini and letting you all know what's coming down the pipeline from Apple. If you guys enjoyed this content and found it helpful, then go ahead and make sure you guys do me that favor, comment down below how many likes are on this video at the time of you guys watching it. Hit that subscribe button while you guys are there because we hitting that 100K this year at the end of the year, no question, because I believe that family. So, thanks again for watching, guys. See y'all in the next one squad. <laughs> now, it's not a secret. I'm a huge fan of the M1 Mac Mini, although I've had a few struggles with it. I'm not going to lie to you guys. You guys can check those out in the videos I have for you guys down below right after this one, of course. But what you didn't know is when you guys buy an M1 Mac Mini, the buying process don't just stop right there. There's a ton of other things that you guys need to be able to complete your M1 Mac Mini setup. And I'm about to tell you guys what they are. So let's go ahead and get started. Woo! So it's been about two months now since I caught the M1 Mac Mini. Wow, low pro fresh in the house, 16 to 8 gigabytes. Tell me what's your style. I'm here to tell you if it's good, if it's not, then it's not worthwhile. Let's see, hold up, performance is great. Apple chips stand up right now. Let's go, let's go. No overheating, got grace the jigs up. Best desktop, I own the glow up. Let's get into this video and complete our two month doc order routine checkup. <laughs> I'm back with these bars, shining through the shadows. Hit that like button and subscribe right now while I spit bar live to your stereo. <laughs> All right, so the very first thing you guys are gonna need right out of the gate is a monitor, but 
Before I actually tell you guys which monitor that I would personally check out, I want you guys right now to go ahead and comment down below how many likes are on this video at the time that you guys are watching. And I got a little something for you guys at the end of this video. Let's go ahead and get back to the monitor. Now, if you guys don't know, the Mac Mini is just the computer portion of the puzzle, meaning you guys still need something that's gonna be able to output to what you guys can actually see for you guys to be able to use it. Now, if you guys are curious on the monitors that I use, then I personally use a 34 inch curve monitor I'll link the model name right here on the screen as well as down the description section below. I came front. In the beginning, I had bought, you know, the last gen version of these monitors and I had to actually take them back twice for issues that I had with them. When I went back to the last time to Micro Center and I swapped them out, they had told me that LG had actually discontinued that model. So they went ahead and upgraded me to the newest models that I have, which those have been dope ever since. So much that I end up buying three of them. There's two over here and you guys can see the one that's right here behind me. So shout out to Micro Center for hooking your boy up with that sweet little deal but you know we gonna we gonna keep that one on the hush hush you know they they looked out for your boy 